Thanks. Uh, in 1970, suburban New Jersey was still filled with the kind of 60s spirit Easy Rider made us all so fond of. I'm referring to the scene where Dennis Hopper gets blown off his motorcycle by some redneck with a shotgun. Uh, a weekend outing at the time was still filled with the drama of possibly getting your ass kicked by a total stranger <laughs> who disagreed with your fashion sense. Uh, me and my band worked on Route 35 outside of Asbury Park at a club called the Pandemonium. Uh, they'd recently lowered the drinking age to 18 with the logic that if you were old enough to die, you were old enough to drink. And so it was five 50-minute sets a night, and rarely a night without a fight. The crowd was eclectic. Uh, rough kids just out of high school who hadn't been snatched up by the draft yet. Truck drivers heading home south into the Jersey Pines who weren't going to make it. Uh, not that night, at least. And a mixture of college and working girls, women with bouffant hairdos, and a small but steady hippie contingent. Tough crowd to please all at once. We played behind a U-shaped bar that was just three feet in spitting distance from many of the patrons who came to just drink and stare and hassle a band. Uh, into New Jersey came the music of John and Tom Fogarty, Doug Clifford, and Stu Cook, Creedence Clearwater Revival. And for the three minutes and seven seconds of Proud Mary, a very strained brotherhood would actually fill a room. It was simply a great song everybody liked, and it literally saved our asses on many occasions. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Creedence started off in the long jamming tradition of other San Francisco bands, realized it wasn't their road, quit cold, and went on to great things. Green River, Bad Moon Rising, Down on the Corner, Lodi, Fortunate Son, Who'll Stop the Rain, Born on the Bayou wasn't only great music, it was great dance music, it was great bar band music. I remember in the late 70s, I'd be out in the club and I'd watch some band struggle through one of my songs and then just kind of glide effortlessly through a Creedence Clearwater tune. <laughs> you know, it used to really piss me off. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I stand here tonight still envious of that music's power and its simplicity. <laughs> um, and they were hits. And hits filled with beauty and poetry and a sense of the darkness of events and of history, of an American tradition shot through with pride, fear, paranoia, and they rocked hard. Now, you can't talk about Credence without talking about John Fogarty. On the fashion front, all of Seattle should bow. I give you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, John was uh, the father of the flannel shirt. You know? <laughs> uh, and as a songwriter, only few did as much in three minutes. He was Old Testament, shaggy-haired prophet, fatalist, funny too. As Clint Eastwood said, a man's got to know his limitations. But I can say I've never met anybody who took him so seriously. <laughs> you know? He was severe. He was precise. He said what he had to say and got out of there. It was lyrically spare and beautiful, it created a world of childhood memory and of men and women back to the wall. A landscape of swamps, bayous, endless rivers, gypsy women, back porches, hound dogs chasing ghosts, devils, bad moons rising, straight out of the blues tradition. He turned it into a vision that was all his own. And in Doug, Stu, and Tom, he had the band that could back it up. What makes a great rock band is a funny thing. It's not, always, it's not always the obvious things. You can't ever really know what makes a great band tick. It's not about the, what the players are exactly like. All I know is you had Tom Fogarty's relentless rhythm guitar and, and Doug and Stu's great rhythm section and uh, John's songwriting and singing. And all I know is they played, they played great together. I bumped into John one day up on Mulholland Drive, and we laughed about how far he was from the bayou and I was from the New Jersey Turnpike. <laughs> so, Credence, uh, but Credence made music for all the waylaid Tom Sawyers and Huck Finns, and for a world that would never again be able to take them up on their most simple and eloquent invitation, which was, if you get lost, to come on home to Green River. So let me end by saying, in their day, Credence never got the respect they deserved. 
Who would have thought in 69 that before the Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, Moby Grape, Strawberry Alarm Clock, or Electric Prunes, Credence would be inducted into a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame if there was going to be one? They committed the sin of being too popular when hitness was all. They played no frills American music for the people. In the late 60s and early 70s, they weren't the hippest band in the world, just the best. So let me, yeah. Anyway, so let me finish by saying congratulations, men, do a job well done. And to all the naysayers, ha, 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 they told you so. <laughs> so, Doug Clifford, Stu Cook, Jeff Fogarty accepting for his dad. John Fogarty, congratulations. Dad's induction to the Hall of Fame.